To kick off our Big 12 previews, we possibly have the most overlooked team for the 2019 season. That is Iowa State. And that's where we're going to be going over today. Iowa State's schedule preview. We'll be going over a few players that this team will be losing, who they're going to be returning, and also we're going to be looking at their schedule for the first time this offseason. Definitely is a team with a lot of potential. Uh, they went 8-5 and five last season, and they lose Montgomery, two receivers, two linebackers, and one quarterback. So really, only they're losing six starters on both sides of the football. If you can keep that number below three on both sides, that really is going to be really helpful. Because if you can have a lot of experience, that always helps you a lot in college football. And we've seen that from many, many teams. Uh, so yeah, not many losses at all. That is going to help you a lot. 9-10 to 10 win season in 2019. That is a very high possibility in my opinion. Um, I mean, they've got all the keys. They were returning their quarterback, Brock Purdy. Of course, he didn't have the best stats. He had 2,200 yards, 16 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He's got to clean up those interceptions. But if he can clean up those interceptions and get um, more accurate, that will help them a lot. I mean, if you, the, the entire offense wraps around the quarterback. If your quarterback does well, so do your receivers typically. It all kind of goes full circle. Yeah, for Iowa State, definitely is going to be a team to watch out for next season, especially if you're playing them in the Big 12. If you're going on the road to Ames, it's going to be a tough game. That's what I can guarantee you. Here's their schedule. You got Northern Iowa, Iowa, uh, Louisiana, Monroe, and then you got Baylor to round out your September. So really, September isn't going to be very easy, except for, I mean, Northern Iowa and Monroe, they should beat. Of course, nothing is really guaranteed in college football. That is that has been shown many times. Iowa at home, that is going to be a, one of their bigger games of the season. I know that's a rivalry game. It's really going to help. I think that they're going to have a good chance to win that game. I'm happy to tell you guys, um, just because they're at home. Being a, being at home in college football always is like home field advantages are very real in college football, and we've seen that multiple times. At Baylor on September 28th, I do expect Baylor to be better this year, believe it or not. Uh, they really have a lot of potential, I do believe. Um, TCU at home on October 5th. October 12th, you got West Virginia, Texas Tech, both on the road. Oklahoma State at home at Oklahoma versus Texas at home. They are, uh, they're in November, especially the beginning parts of November, very difficult. You got Oklahoma and Texas on back-to-back -back weeks. Then you got Kansas State to round off the end of the season on the road. So really, I mean, I think that Texas game right there, especially on November 16th, that is going to be one to watch out for. I think that they're going to have. I mean, that's going to be that's going to be a trap game for Texas. I think Iowa State really has a chance to win that game, just because it's at home for one, and for two they're going to be going. They're they're going to be coming off of that Oklahoma game, so they're going to kind of know how Texas is going to play. Texas is going to be a play, or they're going to play tough. I expect Texas to be really good next season. That is going to be a major upset if they can win that game. Of course, I'm not going to put it in green though yet, just because I'm not guaranteeing that being a win. But there is a pretty good possibility that that could be an upset on November 16th. For your four green games, or the games that I almost guarantee that you'll win, that is Northern Iowa, Louisiana, Monroe, TCU, and Kansas. I mean, TCU, you may question me putting that in green, but TCU, I really don't expect a lot of out of next season. They're losing way too many players for one. And for two, they're kind of just burned out. We saw them last season. Uh, they looked really good at the beginning of the season. We were kind of like, I mean, they were hanging with Ohio State and stuff. But really, once they got off to the end of the season, they were just really, they're really bumpy and inconsistent. I think that they'll win that TCU game at home. Uh, I considered putting West Virginia as a green game. I really don't expect much out of West Virginia as well. I mean, losing Will Greer and then you're losing almost your entire defense as well. Uh, so that West Virginia game should be a win on the road. That'll be uh, one of those road games that I do expect to be a win. Uh, but I'm not going to put that in green because once again, being on the road is never a guaranteed win. Uh, Texas Tech on the road, I think they could win that game. It's hard to tell at this point. Oklahoma State at home, definitely that would be a that'd be a good win if they can win that at home. Of course, Oklahoma State, also another very inconsistent team. We see that a lot in the Big 12. I mean, really, you don't need a defense to be able to be good. I mean, we see that with Oklahoma. Oklahoma hardly even had a defense last season. I mean, they were still able to go on to the college football playoff. Uh, but then you got Texas at home. That is their one, that's probably the big game that you're going to want to mark on their calendars if you're a Iowa State fan, just because it's at home for one and for two, it's Texas. So Kansas at home on November 23rd, that should easily be a win. And Kansas State on the road. Kansas State is a tough place to play. We've seen that. Um, and, I mean, Kansas State, I do expect to be better next season, so that's something to watch out for. SMA director wise, I'm saying 7-5 to 11-1. I'm saying 11-1 as the 
best or like the the best case scenario. Um, I, I feel like that's kind of pushing it a little bit to 11 and one. I mean, looking at the schedule, it's definitely possible. I mean, you lose if you lose Oklahoma and Texas, or you lose one of those games possibly, um, and then you win every game else. I mean, every game on here is winnable for Iowa State next season. I don't understand. I mean, Oklahoma's probably going to be their toughest one being on the road. Um, but I definitely think that I mean, 11 and one is possible. It's very slim chance. There's a slim chance of that happening, um, but it definitely is still possible. If you want a more defined uh, or a more defined record as to how the, I think that they're going to do, I'm going to say eight to ten wins right now. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that, just because since we're several months away from the season, it'd be kind of inaccurate to say what record that they're actually going to get. We're in March right now, so we're still like five months away from the season. We're going to be going over this team once again, and I'll be saying like my official record of what I'm actually like predicting for this team. Uh, but once again, we are not there yet, so. That is it for Iowa State schedule preview. And let me know your guys' thoughts on this team in the comments below. I'd like to hear what you guys think. Don't let your thoughts go unknown if you disagree with this. And we're going over the Big 12 right now. This is the first schedule preview of the Big 12. We're going to be going over the rest of the Big 12 teams. So stay tuned for those. And once again, you guys, thank you all for watching. And stay tuned for more from ASC.